in our region, a number of our oldest companies are still managing to push the edge when it comes to energy innovation. One good example is Highland Patterson, a company that's celebrating its 125th anniversary this year. The company's been around long enough to have manufactured enormous cranes for the naval yards that built the U.S. fleet during World War II and the wheels that enabled the roof to move on the retractable dome of the Civic Arena. Well, today it's turning waste products into fuel at power plants and manufacturing equipment uh, that makes wood a renewable rival to coal as an energy source. Harry Edelman is Executive Vice President of Highland Patterson. Welcome, good to see you. Good morning. This is a multi-generational company for your family, right? Yes, it is. How long, how long, how long, uh, how long have, uh, have the Edelmans been involved? My grandfather started in 1917. 1917, 1917. so not all that long after the, com after the That's company correct. had been formed. And uh, describe what you do. I, I gave a little bit of a sense off the top, but how would you describe what business you're in? We have two divisions. One does bulk material handling, and one that does thermal processing equipment. Okay. The bulk material handling typically unloads or moves rail car or barges, and the thermal processing dries or changes the processes of some industrial products. And that's where there's really a lot of innovation happening these days. Yes. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing in the thermal processing area because it's really important to, to more efficient energy uh, production. We're in a variety of different fields, um, mining and chemical, but some of the energy fields um, like the torrefaction that we do, um, we have we make equipment. We don't own the equipment. We don't operate the equipment. We make the equipment and sell it. But the target market is that if you have wood pellets or you have wood chips, we can process them into what you would consider a, a man-made charcoal hmm. that can be blended with coal to uh, reduce some of the problems with coal at very close to the same characteristics as coal. So uh, what burns a little cleaner and more efficiently? A little cleaner, more efficiently. It, it, because it, when the process is done, it doesn't absorb the, the water, so you can store it and blend it with the coal in the coal pile. Hmm. Now, and the wood chips themselves, where do they come from? What's being done with them now? Right now, there are a lot of uses. I mean, I'm, you know, they're they're landfilled and all kinds of things, but um, grind them up to make particle board. They're I grind suppose. them up to all, make particle all, board, places where we see and them um, they're also just making them into pellets and shipping them overseas. Hmm. But by torrifying them, you kind of improve the process and make them more usable. You've got a couple of examples here, right? Kind of the before and after of what this, this looks is, like. This, this is wood chips, but it's before and after. Okay. You know, and, and we run them through our process, but they don't catch fire because of some of the proprietary. Um, equipment so we can bake the bad things out of them without them incinerating. Okay, without them catching fire, it being wooden. Yeah. And then what, the end product can be these pellets too? The end product so, could be a wood chip or okay. it could be the pellet depending on what they start with. And then it would go to someone who's burning coal. For and they, they would blend it with coal, not burn 100%. Now is this a technology you all developed here? Or? No, um, it's been around for a while. Our equipment, we're familiar with our equipment so we know what it can be used for. And a lot of people have been trying to do this because they understand the process, but they don't know the technology. Well, we have the technology, and we just moved into this field. Okay, well, I, I, you hear that story repeated a lot around here in our region, where there's a technology and, a, and right. some ingenuity to find out how to accomplish something. So we've been making been these machines for decades, and we're just bringing them into this particular industry. Wow, oh, that's a, that's a, that's terrific. So, uh, how's it been going for the company? We've come out of the Great Recession. How did you get through that, and how are you doing these days? Well, I must say we didn't lay anybody off, and we've been hiring. Really? <laughs> yes. That's oh, that's a great story. You know, it, was, it was. We were careful, and you know. You got to be a little bit concerned, but um, we are trying very, very hard, you know, to move into different industries as, you know, as they become suitable for us and move out of ones that don't seem to make sense. And, you know, so we are doing all right coming out of the Great Recession. That's really terrific. And now you got a book to tell your own story, right? Tell me about that. Well, we just finished working on a book that works out to about 60 pages, and it's the history of Highland Patterson for the last 125 years as best you can do by putting it in a 60-page book. Huh. But what we were fortunate, we had what you would call archivists over the years. You know, the newsletters were all saved, okay. photographs were all saved. We have a, a vault with 100 years worth of drawings still in it and everything. And so because of that, there was enough resources to maybe make a couple of books. 
Wow, well that is really terrific. Well, congratulations. Hopefully people can look for a copy and, and, and best of luck in your, in your next 125 years. <laughs> Ariel, our, thanks our, our, so our, much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. And next up, we'll be back in a minute with a little dollars and cents. Stay with us.